Hello, this is hello. Hello, hello, this is hello. This is weekend file of the NGA, and we are live. We are live in Abuja, and we are live in Abuja. We are live in Abuja. Yes. Ah. Hello, this is Weekend File on the NTA, and we are live in Abuja. A major challenge before the federal government is how the government uh, will look at the workings of the economy and uh, get it better achieved uh, besides the discovery of oil in Olibri in 1958. Now, before that, agriculture was the mainstay of Nigeria's economy. The Nigerian economy was one of the fastest growing economies in the world before the Civil War. The oil boom of the early 70s came with mixed experience, after which Nigeria now saw the need to diversify the economy away from oil. Since then, various governments have been tinkering with the idea of developing other sectors of the economy. Now, since 1999, government has committed huge funding to develop infrastructure as a necessary recipe for stimulating the economy. The current government, through the Central Bank of Nigeria, has provided the largest fund ever to execute Anchor Borrowers Program. The hitherto abandoned rail lines are back on stream to ease commerce within the country. Seaports, dry ports, and cargo airports are being vigorously driven to aid non oil exports. Economic clusters are also springing up in some states of the Federation to mop up exportable products, even as attention is being given to solid minerals development in Nigeria. In all of this, the federal government is aggressively addressing roads construction and reconstruction to aid movement of goods and services. Above all, local production of exportable products are ongoing with maximum support by the federal government. All these are deliberate and decisive measures to develop the nation's economy beyond oil. We can file tonight is on strengthening Nigeria's non-oil export. We do have updates from zones and our guest is Annabelle Kamuche, a group managing director, NISAT. I am Kene Ima Abodike. Welcome. President Muhammad Buhari is back in Abuja after a very successful state visit to the Republic of Portugal. The president was received on arrival at the Indamri Azikiwe International Airport by his chief of staff, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, Minister of the FCT Mohamed Musa Belur, and the Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of Finance and Administration, Sanusi Lemu. Others we are the Director General, Department of State Services, Yusuf Magajibichi, and other senior government officials. During the visit to Lisbon on the invitation of President Marcelo de Souza. Several agreements and memoranda of understanding were signed between Nigeria and Portugal aimed at deepening and expanding relations between the two countries. 
Nigeria's ambassador to Portugal, Alex Kefas, has been speaking on the gains of the visit, which he described as another worthwhile endeavor by President Muhammad Buhari. The major high points of the visit is that uh, Mr. President uh, met with the President of uh, Portugal, His Excellency Professor Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa, and our issues of uh, cooperation between the two countries uh, were all discussed. We have areas like renewable energy, uh, we also discussed the issue of uh, enhancing bilateral cooperation in the areas of um, agriculture, in the areas of uh, trade and investment. We also discussed security because uh, Portugal has been contributing to the troops that are fighting uh, terrorism in the, the Sahel. As an embassy under my leadership, we are going to work with the Portuguese authorities here and also, of course, at home to make sure that these agreements are fully implemented. It is not just to sign an agreement and then disappear. We are going to make sure that these agreements are fully implemented to the latter. In the meantime, President Muhammad Buhari says fiscal policies that are not only favorable and predictable, but tilted towards achieving harmonious business environment await potential investors willing to explore the vast opportunities that are bound in Nigeria. This was in Lisbon while granting audience to a number of Portuguese companies willing to expand their investment in Nigeria. State House correspondent Adam Musambo has the report. First to be granted audience by President Muhammad Buhari is the Executive Vice President of GAB Energy Company, Rodrigo Villanova. GAB Trading, as they are called, is a Portuguese multinational energy corporation engaged in every aspect of the oil and natural gas supply, hydrocarbon exploration and production, refining and trading. They are a major off-taker of our gas. They purchase up to 60% of our LNG. They are interested in increasing the level of trade between uh, their company and Nigeria, especially not only in the gas industry, but also in other products from Nigeria. Mr. President was happy with them, uh, and he says uh, Nigeria is interested in cooperating with them. Uh, they are aware we are about to embark on train seven of the LNG, and that will give scope for more uh, gas to be uh, sold to, to Europe. The founder and chief executive officer of 5,000 Miles, Pedro Hippolito, also came calling. 5,000 Miles is a foreign direct investment facilitation company. The founder uh, calls it a Portuguese Nigerian company because uh, it's an international company with Nigerian shareholders They're working on bringing investors into Nigeria, especially from uh, Portugal. They've been working hard to uh, cross match and uh, introduce uh, investors who are interested in investing in Nigeria from Portugal. Similarly, President Buhari received the executive members of a Portuguese consortium, Inventa, one of the largest intellectual property players operating in several regions of the world. The company, now focusing on Africa, wants to have a formidable local presence in Nigeria. Uh, they are interested in building the intellectual property business in Nigeria. They're working with law firms in Nigeria with a view to uh, increasing the level of uh, registrations for trademarks and uh, willing to uh, train uh, Nigerians to bring them up to international standard with regards to uh, intellectual property. I had to thank Mr. President especially uh, for the encouragement he's been given our ministry. Mr. President is very interested in diversifying our economy away from oil and uh, this visit has shown that uh, there is a very uh, large prospect for, for this diversification. The people have expressed a lot of interest of coming to invest in Nigeria. The minister promised necessary follow-up by officials of the industry, trade and investment ministry towards ensuring that agreements reach yield the desired results. From Lisbon, Portugal, Adamusambu, NTA News. And for the first time in almost two decades, ECOWAS has now concluded arrangements for an institutional reforms. 
to make it smarter in the administration of the body. This is coming ahead of the ECOWAS Heads of State and Government Summit in Accra, Ghana. Nigeria's Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, spoke to our foreign desk correspondent, Usman Aliyu, on the significance of the reforms on Nigeria's economy and diplomacy. We'll be holding the position of uh, internal affairs. That's a position that will be covering administration. That's HR, finance, ICT, and, and a few others. We thought that was a critical position. We're happy with that position. So our recommendation to the meetings of the heads of states, which will take place on Sunday, will be to send the names of the persons whom have been selected by our countries through a very rigorous uh, process. So that's a very important reform. It's going to cut down on the cost of the commission. There are new efficiencies that have been introduced, including uh, a payment platform that is fully implemented. As regards the single currency which you raise, it's still work in progress. Remember that because of the COVID-19 pandemic, another global phenomenon that have uh, affected our region, we have had to extend the convergence criteria period to 2026. The government of Nigeria was, it has been the driving force behind this. I think it, uh, I, it's not that I'm very, I'm very much sure that apart from the commitment put by, 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 by Nigeria, supported the good support we received from Mr. President on this, uh, going around to member countries to convince them, of doing a lot of backdoor diplomacy to make sure that we bring everybody on board for them to support this. I, I think it's a great achievement for, 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 for Nigeria. In a related development, Vice President Yemi Onshimbajo is in Accra, Ghana, representing Nigeria at the 61st Ordinary Session of the Authority of the ECOWAS Heads of State and Government. Vice President Onshimbajo is joining other leaders to deliberate and take decisions on the political, security and humanitarian issues confronting the sub-region at the regular ECOWAS Summit. The meeting will also review the situations in Mali, Guinea and Burkina Faso, particularly towards restoring democratic rule. West African leaders have since 2020 held several sessions, including emergency meetings dedicated to finding lasting solutions to the resurgence of coups in some of the countries in the sub-region. On the sidelines of the summit, the VP will also attend a meeting of the five West African countries involved with the Abidjan-Lagos Corridor Highway Development Project, a flagship project of the Programme for Infrastructure Development in Africa. Now, President Mohamed Bukhari congratulates the Federal Ministry of Transportation, the Nigerian Post Authority, NPA, and all stakeholders in the maritime industry on the successful birthing of the first ship at Lake Deep Sea Port. The president recalls that his approval of four new seaports in the country, including the Lake Deep Sea Port, is hinged on growing the economy, creating massive job opportunities, foreign investment inflows, and trade facilitation. He commends the staff and management in the nation's maritime sector who are working round the clock to make the operationalization of Lake Deep Sea Port before the end of the year a reality, reassuring them of his commitment to sustain investments in these new assets. Governor Babagana Umar Azulim has inaugurated a 30 bed capacity Wulari Primary Health Care Center, one of the numerous health care facilities constructed and equipped by the state government. The governor also flagged off distribution of free maternal health care drugs and consumables to health institutions in the state. Mohamed Goni reports. The edifice, one of the 60 primary health care centers constructed by the present administration, is fully equipped with all medical necessities to bring health care service to the doorsteps of the citizens. Zanna Shatima, who spoke on behalf of the community, appreciated Governor Zulum for construction of roads, street lights, and health care centers, assuring collaborative efforts to maintain the facilities. This administration, within the last three years, have constructed and rehabilitated close to 100 health facilities in Borno State. We have also provided equipment and other medical infrastructures that are needed to support the healthcare delivery systems in the state. The governor, who called for sustained maintenance of the center, also assured that government is making concerted effort to address issues of power supply to healthcare facilities and the state as a whole. 
Commissioner for Health, Professor Arab Alaji, highlighted achievements recorded in the health sector by the Zulu administration that include recruitment of staff of all cadres, provision of infrastructure, implementation of federal salary structure, upgrading of equipment and provision of drugs and consumable worth 900 million naira, among others. The occasion also featured presentation of free maternal healthcare drugs and consumable to some healthcare centers in Maiduguri Metropolitan Council and Jere local government. Governor Zulum had equally handed over 81 units of three-bedroom apartment at the doctor's quarters inaugurated by the Vice President Professor Yemi Osibanjo with another story building of six plots at Mohamed Shua Memorial Hospital, specifically built for medical doctors, and a check of 79 million naira. Two out of the 81 plots were fully punished, while one million naira checks were issued as furniture support to beneficiaries whose plots have not been furnished, including the wife of abducted Gobio Principal Medical Officer Dr. Bola Magaidam. Governor Zulum, who assured the wife of the abductee doctor of safe rescue of her spouse, also thanked the medical doctors for their sacrifices for the people of Borno and further urged them to maintain the edifice and directed two utility vehicles be provided to them for their daily movement. Governor Zulum also inaugurated 2.71 kilometer Ramad Wulari Road and the drainages initiated and completed by the present administration in Maiduguri, Mohamed Goni, NTA News. And still talking health, multiple state of the art health care facilities have been inaugurated in Ocean State by Governor Boyega Hoyetala. It was facilitated by the federal government through the Sustainable Development Goals SDG office and the presidency as part of efforts of the federal government to improve the healthcare delivery system in Oshun and Nigeria at large. Bolaji Akim has details. People state of the art health facilities have, among others, a 100 bed mother and child hospital, 80 bed multipurpose hospital, skilled acquisition and entrepreneur center, as well as transit home and vocational center for abused women and girls. The projects located in Oshubo and Ibragwiji were facilitated by the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals in partnership with Oshun State. Governor Boyega Oyitola, while inaugurating the projects, expressed his administration's commitment to the health and well-being of the people of Oshun. The governor also lauded President Muhammad Buhari for considering Oshun as one of the beneficiaries. With this need and imposing facility, we are taking another permanent shot closer to fulfilling our vision of empowering our people with a view to making them healthy, which will further boost our drive for sustainable economic development. The Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, Adejoke Urulipe Adifuluri, commended the governor for striving to build a healthy population. She noted that the execution of the projects was in fulfillment of President Muhammad Buhari's promise to provide quality healthcare services for Nigerians, particularly women and children. All these projects are related to different goals of the SDGs, which the president promised Nigerian people. And doing this is to complement what the subnational government is doing. The two host communities are expected to take full ownership of the earth facilities in Oshobo, Bolaji Akim, NTA News. In politics, two weeks to Oshun decides. INEC and security agencies are finalizing preparations for a smooth exercise. Mia Ogidi was at the INEC headquarters, Abuja, where a meeting was held this Saturday and now reports. It is Saturday, Saturday affair. Osun governorship election holding Saturday, July 16th. A preparatory meeting holding also on Saturday, July 2nd. But first, a post-mortem of some sort for the June 18th AKT governorship election. INEC and security agencies give themselves a distinction in the exercise. Security was well coordinated. The election was peaceful. But bad outing for those three dead on votes. Vote buying remains a major area of concern. We are working with the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to ensure the prosecution of persons arrested in the AQT governorship election. Back to Ocean governorship election, the state is devoid of pre-election anxiety. I pray the tempo is sustained. I next chairman Mahmoud pleaded, but from the national security advisor to criminals, it's going to be fire for fire. The NSC also urged excess members to build on the successes recorded from the AQT election as some disgruntled politicians may attempt to sabotage the process. 
Party primaries for 2023 general elections over, but the dust generated by the exercise still forming a toxic cloud. INEC records tell of 216 petitions already submitted, numbering 1,650,000 pages, requesting candidates' document. Nigerian elections, especially the conduct of primaries for nomination of candidates by political parties, is one of the most litigated in the world. Indeed, there are now far more cases challenging the breach of internal democracy within political parties than those involving the conduct of the main elections by INEC. The release of those documents come with more job for the judiciary. Mir Ogidi, NT News. The old Progressives Congress presidential standard bearer Bola Ahmed Tidibu did not meet with Governor Wike, whether in France or anywhere, as being reported in some sections of the media. A statement by Tidibu Media Group has acknowledged the fact that the APC presidential candidate holds Governor Wike in high esteem and that because of the national appeal of Tidibu's candidature, he will not hesitate to meet any important national leader when desirable. The statement adds that Ashwaju Tinibu, who is currently in France for some important engagement, will return to the country shortly. Former Minister of Transportation Chibika Mechi has taxed APC supporters in River State to embark on grassroots mobilization and assured that the party is poised to win the 2023 general elections in the state. Amechi spoke shortly after he was given a grand reception on arrival at the Port Harcourt International Airport. Kingsley Amajiri reports. This is the first time Amechi is coming to River State after his exit from the Federal Executive Council and the APC presidential primaries. It was indeed a homecoming as party chieftains and APC supporters accorded him a heroic welcome. <laughs> At a meeting held at the State Party Secretariat, the former minister pledged to unite the party in the state and join the party faithful not to be dissuaded by the antics of the ruling party in the state. He said APC will be on the ballot and would win the election. Trust the courts. Justice will be done. Don't be afraid. Go home and work. Our job is to do what? That's why I came. I came to thank you. I came to urge you to go home and work. Let all of us be unit leaders. I came, I will hold a series of meetings, and I'll be coming home regularly to make sure that we are here. APC governorship candidate Tony Ko reaffirmed the party's commitment to winning the 2023 general elections and ensure that reverse people get the dividend of democracy. In Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amajiri, NTA News. <laughs> About 70 people who were lured and harbored by a church in Ondo, Ondo West local government area of Ondo State, under the pretense of religion, have been rescued by the Nigerian police force. Kayode Olorindare reports that 23 of them are children. More than 70 people, including children and teenagers, were rescued from a church under lock and key in Ondo Town, Ondo State, by the men of Nigeria police. On those state command, the people who were abducted and kept in the church, known as the World Bible Believer Church, since January said they acted on the instructions that they must not go out and expect the second coming of Jesus Christ. God gives us instructions. He told us to wait before in seven days for a specific project to draw us to that way. It was just two months ago I was told to stay to pray. To get some information from God. Since I've been in secondary school, I've been there. The father is having issue with the daughter. On what? That the daughter should not come to the church. Yes. So on that basis, the father did not pay the school fees. Then I said, you cannot force this your daughter like that. Some relatives of the abducted people are waiting to reunite with them. Since January this year, I've not set my eyes on my daughter. And she has gone to school to defy her admission. And she acted on the instruction of the pastor and the assistant pastor. So who spoke to him, to her that it is from the Lord. Rapture is coming by September 2022. And I want this child to follow us to our home so that we can give her parental care. Police Public Relations Officer, Ondo State Command, Fumilayo Odulami, 
said the church will be charged to court for illegal abduction and abhorring after investigation. By the time the police got to the church, just to see the pastor to invite him, the members of the church turned violent and assaulted the policemen. However, preliminary investigation revealed that some of these members have been in the church since January. An assistant pastor who claimed Jesus was going to come back by April and later told them rapture was going to take place by September 2022. So he encouraged them to stop schooling and... You're watching Weekend File on the NTA. It's time for break. The National Primary Healthcare Development Agency has commenced a nationwide operation to verify COVID-19 vaccination records and validate vaccination cards. This exercise will allow vaccinated individuals correct damaged QR codes and confirm personal information like name and date of birth. It will also enable the federal government to validate COVID-19 vaccination cards to identify those that have been acquired fraudulently. To verify your COVID-19 vaccination records, visit www.vaccination.gov.ng forward slash verification dash guide and follow the instructions. If newly vaccinated, wait for 24 hours before verifying your records. For intending international travelers, verify your records at least one week before your travel date to avoid delays at departure point. If you cannot access the website, call 0700-220-1122. This message is from NPHCDA. Wash your hands, love each other, we go we know. Wake up the champion in your child. Give them energy to go further. Milo Active Go and the natural goodness of malt, milk, and cocoa helps wake up the champion in your child. Milo! Music is fuel that fires up our souls. Today, African music has a dominant place on the world map. This massive music movement creating waves across the globe. I have seen the evolution and the growth of this industry. But every movement starts with a story. And the best place to start any story is at the very beginning. There's a primordial energy that can only have come from Africa. There are certain moments in the day when I need my me time to just unwind and indulge. Now available in 30 grams and 450 grams. Motlalo! Motlalo! Nigeria are the ninth champions in this competition! The 12th edition of the Africa Women's Cup of Nations is here with 12 teams including reigning champions and 9 time winners, Super Falcons of Nigeria, all in contention from July 2 to 23 in Rabat, Morocco. You can catch all the actions live on the NTA Network Service and NTA Sports 24, Channel 270 on Star Times, 434 on Starsat and 731 on Free TV. Come, join us to promote another championship round by the Super Falcons. For your advert placement, please call Hawa on 0803-312-1022. Africa Women's Cup of Nations, Rabat 2022. Game on. Welcome back. We've seen the Nigerian government taking strategic steps to boost the non-oil sector with an aggressive policy stance to grow trade exports between Nigeria and West African countries. How has the journey been? Comfort Ambodu examines the policy direction of the federal government over the years towards increasing Nigeria's foreign exchange earnings with a closer look at efforts by the Export Council, NEPC, in this regard. Developing countries are facing rising inflation and limited access to investment instruments following global economic shocks and dwindling oil revenues with short and long-term fiscal impact on global economies. The war between Russia and Ukraine is particularly taking its toll on countries of the world, Nigeria inclusive. These global economic shocks are increasing the need for Nigeria to explore other alternative means using trade as a key instrument for the promotion of a sustainable and steady economy by implementing workable policies and deploying interventions for a stable growth. The idea is to be able to address 
uh, the need to grow the economy on a competitive basis. So each, each segment of the society or each zone of the society has some strengths. The strategic policy stands by the government to increase the country's foreign exchange earnings and participation in intra-African trade and global markets is focused on the known oil sector of the country. At the end of the day, it will generate employment, it will bring into forex, it will develop our industries and of course it will bring up a better economy. So we are in partnership with a lot of other bodies uh, to ensure that uh, we promote non-oil export. We are also doing a survey called Marketplace MSME Data Gathering. So we will now have in our database those companies that are, for example, if you are in fish production, we will have companies that are producing fish feed will be able to match make you. I must give kudos to this administration. To me, I found a lot of fulfillment in our business because they also brought about policies that will not wipe out the local producers. We have uh, issued certificates to over uh, 50 SMEs and all these certifications were sponsored or finance wholly by the Nigerian Export Promotion Council. Nigeria is fast becoming a highway for global brands with the Nigerian Export Promotion Council positioning domestic warehouses, export trade houses and product hubs in West African countries to increase the visibility of made in Nigerian goods in international markets and for ease of doing business. Comfort Amadou, NT News. The realization of an efficient non-oil export sector that will facilitate foreign exchange earnings and boost the nation's economy depends largely on the provision of major interventions by stakeholders manning the Nigeria seaport. Industry players believe that though the government has curated the enabling environment backed by policies to ease trade operations, urgent solutions must be provided to solve the quagmire of export processing timeline, Abolade Salami reports. The task of pulling the country out from among nations that rely on a monolithic means of revenue generation has resulted in the adoption of several economic policies initiated by the federal government to realize an export expansion program for commodities like cocoa beans, sesame seeds, cashew nuts, and soya beans to the tune of 50 billion naira. While the policies serve as roadmap to the actualization of vibrant non-oil export value chain, the major channel of facilitation, which is the seaports, according to data, ended about 191 million metric tons of cargo exports in 2019. Their proper seaport, which currently houses one of the largest shipments of consignment on a daily basis, is receiving attention as the congestion is ongoing to free the corridor of gridlock. Lekki is being constructed intentionally to reduce human interference. Uh, the port, of course, naturally is going to have uh, access control gates. It means that if you do not have any business in the port, you will not come in. And uh, we are impressed that uh, we are going to have a port that will be able to compete with a lot of ports uh, in the world, not just in Africa. The task of driving an enviable non-oil sector in the country does not stop on the table of the Nigeria Port Authority as the nation's monetary authority. The Central Bank of Nigeria, through the RT200 FX program, set to generate $200 billion in foreign exchange from non oil export in the next three to five years. How do we immediately create a dedicated export route for exporters so that their goods can leave? Many of those containers that bring goods into the country go out empty because of this problem. The African Free Trade Zone is a free trade agreement is a great advantage that we could take, take, take I and mean, use in this regard. And I think that if we do that, we could actually begin to turn towards that $200 billion within maybe two or three years. The establishment of 10 export processing parks near port locations across the country by government. Management of the Nigerian Port Authority says is get towards boosting the country's non-oil export trade by 50% in the next two years. In Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTA News. 
Before we go into our discussion with our guests on the program tonight, let's quickly remind you that you can catch live action of the ongoing 12th edition of the Africa Women Cup of Nations. The first game is on as we speak between the host Morocco and Burkina Faso in Rabat. You can watch it live on the NTA Sports 24, uh, Channel 270 on Star Times, 434 on Star Salt, and of course 731 on Free TV. Now let's quickly welcome Annabelle Kamuche, Group Managing Director, NICET, to Weekend File. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, let's quickly take a look at this very important um, topic tonight and how do you appraise, of course, Nigeria's efforts at um, strengthening its non-oil export so far? Okay, so um, the Nigerian government has done a lot when it comes to strengthening the um, non-oil export, but a lot needs to be done more to be able to create an ecosystem that works. So, for instance, if, if um, the government has created um, some incentive for, for exporters, they also have to create infrastructure that backs the ability for exporters to be able to export without sweat or be able to export easily. It's easier to export from Togo than exporting from Lagos. So there, there, there are things that have already been put in place, but I believe that more needs to be put in place to ensure that people who want to export products, export products seamlessly, and it's easy for them. And you know, for export, export most of the time is time bound. You are carrying perishable products, you are carrying products that you need to get to the destination country before it starts going bad. We need to be able to create those kind of infrastructure, both at the seaport and even infrastructure from the um, places where these products are either being produced or harvested and prepared for export to the um, ports where it will um, be exported out of the uh, let, 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 Let's be practical about um, um, your submission right now because um, uh, those are the reasons why there are uh, roads being constructed and reconstructed across the nation and of course uh, the rail lines are back now. These two alone uh, do quite a lot in uh, helping movements of some of these products from where they are being produced to their point of destination. So in your own words or views, what more do you think should be done? Okay, so I'll, I'll give you an example. If, for instance, Nigeria wants to export fresh fruits and vegetables, Good. it becomes difficult because they, they don't have that infrastructure that would um, be able to transport fresh fruits and vegetables. So I'll give you an instance from Kaduna. If you want to export fresh ginger from Kaduna, you have the challenge first of being able to get the right kind of cartons, the waxed cartons that you will use in putting this fresh produce. You have the issue of how many um, vehicles do you have that will be able to carry products in refrigerated vehicles all the way to Lagos. And even if you want to, if you decide to, to use reefer containers using the Kaduna dry sea port, it becomes again difficult because of the road and all of that. So the rail is there, yes, but a lot more needs to be done if we really, really want to grow our non-oil export economy. Quite interesting. Um, what about the areas where uh, normal everyday Nigerians, you know, get busy um, curating or producing these local contents that are for export? How do we cater for them, or how have we have we have we, have we been doing the necessary things, you know, all this while in catering for them while they continue to do these uh, very important uh, jobs? Uh, unfortunately, not really. Um, you you have people who are producing products that are export bound. Some of them even to to be able to get um, incubation centers where they can, you know, they don't have, you, you don't really need to have a lot of money to start, but you want to be able to process your product in a hygienic environment, um, um, probably contract um, packaging and all of that to meet required standards. You might not even be able to get the places where you can do that. There are not a lot of incubation centers. They don't have modular facilities where people can come and do um, first stage processing of products, semi-processing of products to be able to export. Then the issue of infrastructure. You are looking at where is the light 
the prices of diesel have gone so high that it's almost becoming impossible for small players to be able to continue to do business. And we are talking about being able to do non-oil export. For me, if we must grow in the non-oil export, is to add value, not to export raw materials. If we want to export ginger, my own opinion would be, what are the derivatives of ginger, for instance, that we can export? Let's export dry split ginger. Let's export ginger oil. Let's export um, uh, ginger powder. These are the places where we'll be able to make a lot of income. Because remember, again, if we want, if we want it to be sustainable, then it has to be in a, in a way that it becomes beneficial to both the business person or the investor who is investing and also beneficial to the country because you will not be able to get money back. But if right now all we are doing is exporting raw material, the value goes to the country that is going to process. So the value, for instance, of cashew goes to Vietnam. So there is a huge industry of, um, that has been built around Nigerian cashew. Even though Nigeria has, All right. you know? L let me ask you this. Yeah. Um, um, so most of these things, uh, should it be the government that should provide all of this? So what do you make of the policies and the enabling environments that, that has been all already curated by the government for these things to thrive? Yeah, so, so I'm not saying government has to, you know, make everything available. Government has to create an enabling environment. So if there are states that have industrial parks, for instance, there is nothing stopping an, um, an individual, an investor from going to set up a processing facility there. So if a state, for instance, like Kogi State, like Enugu State, like Oyo State that have a lot of cashew, can build industrial, industrial hubs where people, people can now come and set up small modular um, um, processing facilities for cashew. And then they will be able to sell both locally and be able to export. It has to be a joint effort between the government and the... And the sub uh, and, and the, Yeah, exactly. All right, thanks for landing there. Uh, you're watching Wicked File. Time for another break. Please stay with us. ...has always dreamt of being in the spotlight. That's why I give him Born Vita for everyday vitality. That gives him the strength to pursue his dreams. Born Vita. Strength to dream. Lalo. But Lalo, Nigeria are the ninth mm -hmm. champions mm -hmm. in this competition. The 12th edition of the Africa Women's Cup of Nations mm -hmm. is here with 12 teams, mm -hmm. including mm -hmm. reigning champions mm -hmm. and nine time winners, yeah. Super Falcons of Nigeria, all in contention from July 2 to 23 in Rabat, Morocco. You can catch all the actions live on the NTA network service and NTA Sports 24, Channel 270 on Star Times, 434 on Starsat, and 731 on Free TV. Come join us to promote another championship round by the Super Falcons. For your advert placement, please call Hawa on 0803 312 1022. Africa Women's Cup of Nations, Rabat 2022. Game on. To every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise. Remember, the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being above board, by being civil, patriotic and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency.
Thank you for staying there. The federal government's efforts at diversifying the economy is yielding positive results as farmers in Imo and Ebony State are now paying more attention to enhancing their agricultural products to internationally accepted standards. Kate Osungwa reports that apart from the use of improved seedlings in Imo State, the Ebony State government is also engaging in the use of ICT to boost international demand. And the Bonistas are known to contribute largely to the nation's gross domestic products, which accounted for close to 70% of her export earnings before the oil boom in the 60s. Products such as cassava, palm oil, the popular black rice, pineapple, cucumber, among others, made the states popular both locally and internationally. This pineapple orchard at Omaapu in Ohajibuma, local government area of Imo State, produces in large quantity and has the added value of turning out pineapple juice and powder of international standard. The freeze drying is better, but freeze drying needs a lot of capital. When you bring the, the pancanas from the, after removing the oil and the fibers, process it to exporting standard. A boy produces 4.1 metric tons of rice paddy per annum. Go to our market, go to Karago market, go to all the markets in Abon. You see truckloads of, uh, of uh, garlic that is being moved from uh, our local markets to everywhere. The advancement of these agricultural products, apart from the international process, has also created increased demand locally. Anthony Adrochi is the Imo State Coordinator, Nigerian Export Promotion Council. Imo also has uh, people who have uh, been exporting. You know, if you put them even their small, small measures, we could record about uh, $2.3 million coming to Imo State from this export of these small, small pro uh, products. To achieve the desired international acceptance of Nigeria's agricultural products, experts insist that technology needs to get more attention. Kate Usunwa. Kano has continued to maintain its leading role as the commercial nerve center of northern Nigeria with significant contribution to the Nigeria's non-oil export. Aminu Umar reports that stakeholders are optimistic that the state can do better, which, however, depends on the improvement in infrastructure in addition to addressing what they describe as over-regulations. It's continuously playing a key role in promoting non-oil export, which is not unconnected with its historical relationship with West African countries, which dated back to transparent trade that predates the discovery of oil. The non-oil economy is supported by agriculture, mines and industry in addition to commercial activities which is supported by large markets with the popular Dawano market which is among the largest commodity markets in West Africa. Today we account for uh, the largest grains market in Africa which brings the contribution that we do of uh, one of the non-oil exports which is Sisane that uh, has been uh, in excess of 70% from that market alone of the entire uh, national export of the commodity. However, challenge in infrastructure, pricing, production capacity and overregulation, the stakeholders believe are among the obstacles that needed to be addressed to fully gain from the yet to be exploited potentials of non-oil sector. Non-oil export is a project to be supported and we call on them to do more. But we call on all that are doing it to ensure that there are interagency collaboration. The cost of energy has gone up by almost 400 percent. As it is now, a litre of diesel costs more than 800 naira. So when you look at the value chain, the goods that we buy from Lagos to Kano, the transport that normally goes between Three to four hundred thousand naira. Now it's almost one million naira. They are also of the opinion that manufacturing, which adds value as well as supports agriculture, apart from improving non oil export capacity of the nation, has the potential to promote unity and understanding, which is key to achieving national security by reducing unemployment rate and bringing people from different cultural backgrounds to work together. In Kano, Amin Umar, NTA News.
We're still discussing with uh, Annabelle Kamuche, Group Managing Director, NICERT. Let's quickly look at the areas you think a government has done enough to promote um, exports. For instance, uh, one of the reports, especially the one from the Southeast, uh, you know, detailed a lot about um, how agriculture has also come to play a major role in ensuring that the uh, non oil sector has been a major contributor to the national purse in recent times. Mm -hmm. How do you react? Yeah, so um, I agree that government has done a lot. The, the Nigerian Export Promotion Council state governments have been um, helping with, you know, um, creating enabling environment. They've also um, been able to, um, for instance, what we just heard where the state government is helping with agriculture, because again, the agriculture for us, as a people because we have over 78 million um, hectares of arable land agriculture for us when it comes to non oil export should be one of the big top notch, the yeah. top notch that we have to hold on to so i i am i'm very happy when i hear that state governments are beginning to identify the areas the value chains within the agricultural sector that they can play in and um bearing in mind that look if it's going to be export it must be in compliance with international standards so for me that is that is kudos to the government, both the state government, the federal government and all of that. And that is what we now need to intensify to be able to ensure that we do all that needs to be done to get these products, not just to produce them, but to be able to get them out of the country. Okay, so uh, so, so what role, nice right now, uh, what role does it do in certification, uh, you know, to meet up with global standard, even as we continue to boof, uh, boost our uh, non um oil sector yeah so for for NYSAT, it's it's um the role that we play in the non oil export is very crucial because we ensure that products have complied with international standards and give certificate as proof of compliance so we work with the ecosat accreditation we have within nigeria which was not there before auditors and inspectors that are qualified for various schemes so like the organic according to the usda according to the eu organic regulation global good agricultural practice standard for people for instance that are doing um, pineapple if you want to sell in the european market you have to be compliant with the good um, global good agricultural practice standard and have certificate as proof of compliance so all of those standards we are able to certify and initially before we came into into existence they have to bring people from Ghana from Burkina Faso into Nigeria to carry out audit and inspection making the cost of certification too high okay. so when we came in we realized that for us to, for it to be sustainable we have to train our locals and qualify them for various international um, schemes. The standards are in compliance to various international schemes so that yeah. they are able to certify Nigerians in Nigeria, okay. bring down the cost of certification and they would have the certificate as proof of compliance and be able to compete so anywhere. are we making progress? Yes. Yes. So the NEPC has been very helpful. The NEPC um, um, through the um, export expansion program was able to pay for some um, associations, about six associations to get their products um, certified for various international standards. Okay. They've also gone ahead to even um, um, pay for um, producers who have now produced and processed product to be in compliance with HACCP, with Halal, and um, with ISO 22000. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. indeed for your time tonight Thank you so on much. Weekend Val. Thank you so much. We've been speaking with uh, Annabelle Kamuche, Group Managing Director, NYSERT. Of course, you're watching Weekend File on the NTA. Let's pause for break one more time. Motlalo, Nigeria are the ninth champions in this competition. The 12th edition of the Africa Women's Cup of Nations is here with 12 teams including reigning champions and 9 time winners, Super Falcons of Nigeria, all in contention from July 2 to 23 in Rabat, Morocco. You can catch all the actions live on the NTA Network Service and NTA Sports 24, Channel 270 on Star Times, 434 on Starsat and 731 on Free TV. Come, join us to promote another championship round by the Super 
Falcons. For your advert placement, please call her 1 on 0803 312 1022. Africa Women's Cup of Nations, Rabat 2022. Game on. The ever busy ancient city of Onitsha is a commercial hub with millions of commuters seamlessly linking other states daily for business, leisure, and other purposes. To upscale its road network, the construction of a 1.6 kilometer long Second Niger Bridge, including a 10.3 kilometer highway furnished with other infrastructure, has been in motion by the federal government. This project will ease congestion on the existing 56 year old Onitsha Bridge and boost the economic capacity of the state as it easily connects to other parts of the country. The completion of the world class Second Niger Bridge Onitsha will be one of the many proud moments of the state, its people, Nigeria and foreign investors. Onicha, which hosts the largest market in Africa, is geared up to boast of an impressive road network. Once again, these moments are made alive by the federal government and it is deserving of all the applause. Operational efficiency and combat readiness are dependent on mental and physical fitness, which the Nigerian Navy has demonstrated in its second quarter road match spanning 10 kilometers. The first correspondent, Najatu Tijani, reports. One might be alarmed by this sight of the rank and file of the Nigerian Navy marching resolutely towards an already selected point. However, there is no cause for alarm as it is a routine exercise which is part of military training and is performed quarterly or as the need arises to test stamina and resilience. Following a route which will take them from the naval unit to AYA and back to base, the march also offers an opportunity for any recruits to get familiar with the terrain. With the march over, the chief of the naval staff in a message commends his men, reminding them not to rest on their oars in defending the nation. Nigeria, we have uh, quite a number of security challenges here, which requires the armed forces to be physically present to assist. Uh, we cannot do that until we have personnel that are physically fit and capable of engaging the enemy in all terrains. The route march for this quarter may have taken place on land, but the personnel of the Nigerian Navy are expected to keep marching onwards together to ensure maritime safety. Naja Atutijani, NTA News. Sports update is next. Uh, meantime, the Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Dari, as felicitated with all sports journalists in Nigeria and beyond as the world marks the 2022 International Sports Journalist Day. The minister stated that sports journalists in Nigeria ranked very high among other professionals. Meanwhile, journalists have been advised to use the pen profession to promote peace, unity and national development. This was the major focus as stakeholders celebrated Sports Journalist Day. We have a lot of young talent in sports and facilities which, if being utilized, will curtail the social vices. In grassroots tennis, sustaining the exploit of the Junior Tennis Championship to win laurels at continental and international tournaments requires combining sports with education. This, the academy says, is being encouraged among young players. There are a lot of sports uh, lovers who want to use the rest of their lives, their retired life, to serve sports, but they need to be encouraged. When you develop and support the youth who are the future of this country, then we are doing something right. In another news, Nigerian Olympic gold medalist Chioma Ajoa has once again cautioned sportsmen against the use of drugs. At an event at the National Stadium Lagos, tagged school anti-drug campaign initiative, the Olympic gold medalist reminded the students of the dangers of engaging in illicit drugs and other social vices which have negative effects on their careers. With sports update, Olumide Guntola, NT News.
Of course, uh, a quick reminder that you can watch uh, the 12th edition of the Africa Women's Cup of Nations game live, which has gone about uh, 25 minutes now, and it's still goalless between Morocco and Burkina Faso in Rabat, the opening game of that competition. You can watch it live on NTA Sports 24 and NTA uh, Parliament. Well, uh, remember that NTA is vehemently against rape and rapists, those supporters in the fight against them in our society. I am Kenan Ima Abodike. Thank you for watching Weekend Fire tonight and good night.